Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Ryan Thompson here with Jeremy Zwern. Uh, I'm stepping in for Damon Stone for a brief moment here while we get everybody rolling. Our final match is definitely starting. We have Tom Caper versus uh, David, David Ber Bergstrom. <clears throat> so this is the rematch of all rematches, I guess you'd call it. Yep. Last year they faced off in the semifinals. David defeated Tom. And earlier today they faced off again. David defeated Tom yet again. So we'll see what happens this time. Yeah, this is interesting. What round was it that uh, David defeated Tom? I believe the fourth round. Fourth round. So this will be very interesting uh, once we get into the game, really see how this is playing. I know Tom is definitely in the zone. Oh, yeah. uh, he he wants this bad. This is the last time. world, so he definitely wants it bad. Big time. So. Yeah, this is for all the marbles. Last ever world championship for Call of Cthulhu, so. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. So everybody, I'm going to step aside here. Damon Stone is back. He's going to jump right back into this. Uh, and here we go for the last Call of Cthulhu, the card game LCG world champion uh, that it's ever going to hold. Thank yep. you, everybody. And in this, just a minute, it's going to be Damon Stone back again with Jeremy's Worm. So David's running a Yogg Miskatonic deck. His restricted yeah, yeah. card is Alternative Historian. I have to admit, this deck's a very, very strong deck. I haven't uh, sort of give David the deck tech here that he has. <laughs> we played tested a little bit earlier this week. David hadn't played since the store championship season, so he's a bit rusty. So he asked me if I play a few games to uh, get the rust off, and I said, sure. And I played a deck very similar to the one he's playing right now. And he liked it so much, he asked me if he could use it, and I'm like, no problem. And made a few changes, but. So I'm a little biased uh, with his deck. <laughs> of course, it has two of the best cards ever included. Uh, so that would be Hall of Champions. Mm -hmm. oh, and, uh, no. You're, you're yeah. Sorry, one more thing. Sorry. <laughs> that is an amazing yeah, card now. Line. Yes. Which is only fitting, seeing this is a world championship. Yeah. Want to play a bunch of world champion cards in it. Last game at Cthulhu, yeah. competitively. Good luck. Good luck, Tom. Tom, always the gentleman. Yes. Indeed. I'm first player. Look at David's I'm domains. Those are very pretty domains. Mm. Unicorn power. Tom's using some sleeves that he's used to win the first three world championship titles, so hoping to bring some good luck to him. Mm -hmm. A limited edition Call of Cthulhu sleeves produced by Fantasy Flight Games Supply. Yep. So, so Tom has a Miss Leaf in hand, Sebastian Blake, descendant of Ibon, good old Jim. The mage known as Magnus, disease sewer rats. Looks like Hall of Champions, Talking Hound, Archmage Arcanus. Lots of neutral I, uh... cards. Which can be a good thing for Archmage Arcanus. Mm -hmm. Lord's cost I, by yeah, two. Keep this. David's keeping his hand. What does he have? It's like an Ultima Thule. Uh, sure Alternative Story, Mr. Leith. Lucas Tetlo. Pushing to beyond. How much wavering am I allowed on that decision? Obsessive Elder thing. And here goes the table talk with David. I know people mentioned last year he was very chatty, but. He's a great guy. He does it just for fun. So the stories that we have revealed, starting from closest to the trophy, is the heirloom. Each player may search his deck for a support card, reveal it, and put it that card into his hand. Then each player shuffles his deck. Next, we have Village of Ash. Each player chooses one story card that he has won, except for this one, and shuffles it into the story deck. Then shuffle all relic cards in play into their owner's deck. And last, we have the second dragon. Each player may choose a non-unique character he controls and search his deck for any number of cards with the same title. Put those cards into play, then each player shuffles his deck. All about the resource and most important decision all game usually. Yeah, as we mentioned before, that one decision really affects everything else that's going to go for your next three, four turns. Easy. 
which five cars you keep. So Thompson will get rid of the missile leaf himself and Sebastian Blake. I'm not sure who the first player is. That can be very important also. And since this is on time, you can take your time, think things over. We're good. I've been known to do that many times. Well, you never want to lose because you felt rushed. Right. You want to make sure that each of the decisions that you're making is the right one, weighing all the possible options. Of course, as we saw uh, in some of the games yesterday, that it is very easy to get yourself in a position of analysis paralysis where the decision tree is just so complex that the more that you think it over, the more, more less sure you end up. All right, yeah. And if I could have participated in the tournament today, I would have played a deck very similar to David's there. Can be very aggressive or controlling. That Re hybrid style is definitely yes. my personal favorite. Very adaptive. React to your, what your pawn's doing. No, I just can't do that. Not sure what to resource here. Tom has his lucky sleeves with him there. David has his lucky unicorn sleeves for his domains. Who will prevail? A really tough resource and decisions here, looks like, for David. It looks like he's narrowed it down a little bit. They put an alternative historian pushing him beyond face down, so I'm assuming he's keeping those cards for surely. Mm -hmm. So he's decided. Keeping us talking hound for surely. Okay, I'm good. All right, here we go. We get the reveal. Miss yes. Delete. Sebastian Mr. Blake. Magnus. Yes. <laughs> and Lucas and Will. And who's right, the first player? First. Yep. David. Did I go first or last game? Good luck. That was another copy of Ultimate Thule. And so David was just uh, reminding Tom in a somewhat uh, Minnesotan way mm -hmm. that uh, that last game that they played, he went first and he won. Mm -hmm. He was playing first again. A little bit of psychological warfare to go along with the game plan. Historian? Draw a card? Alternative story, amazing card. Nathaniel Beasley into his hand. Yeah. The ultimate Thule. He has no explorer to go with it currently. But Tom doesn't know that. Elder thing. An obsessive elder thing. Go ahead, sir. Tom just shooting Professor Nathaniel Peasley. And another disease zero rats. Wow. Two disease tourists in hand can knock off those little guys, wound them, get the alternative turn historian off the board. Hard advantage is king. Lots of options, what to do. It's like and soon Tom will play up the Peasley. Probably a disease sewer rats, knock out one of his two Davis characters there. Also has a stalking hound. Just in case David would bring an explorer into play, he has a stalking hound ready for it. Mm -hmm. This Ultima Thule, great card. It's also to put Explorer into play, and that's when the phase returns to your hand. Tom's definitely going to want to keep that stalking hound for that jump. 
Of course, we know that Tom does not. And currently, there are no explorers in the dense town. As Tom could play Archmage or Cast first turn. He's going with Hall of Champions. That's good. He's going to play Nathaniel Peasley here. Yep. Mr. Peasley? He could trade Peasley right now for the obsessive dollar thing if he wanted to. Maybe Tom will go on the aggressive side if he does that. Just talking out and just sending of Ivan in hand. Must be a good feeling. Two very strong cards. No actions? Pass action? You did? I'm passing action to destroy this. Oh, I'll pass too. Tom's choosing to wait for Professor Nathaniel Peasley. David has his own Professor Nathaniel Peasley. If he plays that, nobody can swap them since they each control a unique character, character with the same name. Resourcing. A lot of difficult choice what to resource. So there's a bunch of great cards in hand. No clear choice. I assume each player knows each other's deck fairly well since they played earlier. They're both playing Seer the Gate, so let's be conscious of that. What cards do you hold in hand? What cards do you play in resource? Yeah. Like Tom could go and search for a champion card. He's also Hall of Champions and find a Seer the Gate. And so does David think about that and try to play a card that Tom would, might name right now so he doesn't hit it with a Seer? Like push from beyond is a very common card to name because it's a very strong card. Yeah, look, one of the things that I really like about that design, you can make a meta call, well, this is interesting. get rid of the thing that you think is most likely to be in their hand that, that you're most feared at seeing at a given time. Yep. And if you get that second one out, you now have the information of their entire hand. So it's not just helping you shape your next turn or two. Yeah, any resource in the for mm -hmm. now. Probably worry about the Hall of Champions finding this here. Make him discard anyway, so. Might as well get some uh, new side of it. His own Pisa. Now, what I'd really like to see right now is an uh, exchange of Pisas. Another obsessive elder thing. Looks so like David will get very aggressive uh, here. David is not afraid to commit. commit to? <laughs> Still has no explorer in hand for the ultimate fuel, so. It's the worst that happens. Nothing too terrible. Tom must realize that if he's not bringing one into play right now. Champions. Who's going to come into play? I don't mind like I would whiff right here. I'm sure Tom has plenty of cards in there, so. What are his options? Venture Devon, Demir's Machinations, the Major's Machinations. 
There's a Sierra Gates right there. This game has a lot of champion cards. That's a lot of choices. Don't see Mendra Devon too often these days, so it's kind of cool to see in the finals match here. Definitely, definitely. And it's designed by Chris Long, the 2006 world champion. And he's going with the Mentor Devon. Two Comet, Arcane, Willpower. You pay it one domain, one resource to one domain to exhaust a character with skill less. Which won't do any good right now, but. Still good with his icons. So he brought out a character into play through Trigger Effect. David has a stalking you know, out. He's thinking right now how many stalking out does his opponent have? Yep. Here comes his sound. Tommy has his sound. So he's exactly what he wanted. How about the Hound game? Does your opponent have more than you? If they do, it's not a good sign for you. That is a fact. Now Tom can really do some damage here. But David does have an alternative historian, so he can cancel story struggles. He discards a card for each one. Not what David wanted to see. I probably want to play that Soggy Hound. So that gives Tom a huge advantage. Tom's wondering about Black Dog right now. <laughs> I do not believe it is. You don't believe it is? Nope. All right. And it is not. Not looking good for David all of a sudden. Probably shouldn't play the, put a second out into plays now. Tom is his own. He's able to commit his talking out to the story, David cannot. As of now, David doesn't take any actions. He will have profess Professor Nathaniel PZ driven insane. The obsessless elder thing will be wounded. And then he'll have to wound either his other obsessive elder thing or alternative historian. And cancel the combat struggle. To say it's a pretty good choice. Oh, Discarding awesome. Lucas Tetlo, but he has yeah. no cards in hand now. Uh, we'll Tom Page one to exhaust the stalking out with the Metro Devon. Yep. Uh, that was probably a big mistake on Davis Card, but the Hound didn't play it. A gamble we'll go not worth taking, in my opinion. Uh, I would agree with that. Metro of on the bottom of the deck. There you go. That's big swing in the game that turn all of a sudden. Yeah, I think that there is a really, really good chance. Really, really, really good chance that we're going to see some uh, some bits of regret on the day for that, yeah. uh, that last play. Now all his characters are exhausted or insane, and he has no cards in hand. So, wide open for time to go to stories this turn. And with two arcane characters, we know that he will be able to and just bring disease back. sewer rats. Uh, yes. And I'll turn into strength. Huh? Tom trying to pay one for his disease sewer rats. <laughs> His arc range is attached here. Probably should have done that first just to see what he gets on top here. Mm -hmm. Another PZ, that's worthless. Yep. 
That's a strong board state right there. Yes, it is. Not looking for David. That's going to be two at all three stories. Tom has nothing to fear from right. any cards coming into play. That stalking Allen's going to be a big mistake. And they were all ready. Champions. Another stalking out. An obsessive other thing returned to his hands since he did not come into a story that turned. Might have an action during your resource phase. Uh, go ahead. You're not resourcing? I am going to not resource. Sugar ball. Yep. I'll try his seal like gate here and get the obsessive other thing out of his hand. Thomas just played Hall of Champions. Mage known as Maidness. So that's his only option since he has a copy of his other card in play already. Or not. It's going to opt not to play. Not finding where he was looking for there. I'll pass to operations. Sounds good. David will face Hall of Champions out. Let's see if Tom destroys his Hall of Champions with his own Hall of Champions here. He's thinking about it. I would do it. You got a much better board state. Yep, there he goes. Yep, reviews at home. Shut up there. Using his champion card to good effect. Sacrifice one of his champion cards to destroy another one of his. With his champion card, it's gotta feel good. Dude is in a tough spot yes. here. Uh, go to you. My turn? Davis says his obsessive other thing in hand. I'm not sure why I didn't play it there. Since he only has a stock nail that's ready right now to defend stories. And Tom is contemplating putting in his uh, conspiracy card. I don't know, uh, resourcing. Reveals frozen time. He's going to play on the Ultima Fool. There's a lot of disease. Sewer Rats, back off the Hound. He's sending those stories. And four success, or four success stories in each story. I'll be ready. Massive advantage. I don't see how Dave can come back from this. Now he draws a roll. <laughs> right after he <laughs> blanks the Ultima Thule. A little too late. But he does have a Seerly Gates. There we go. Play up just developing last turn. It's 
for the game right here. Drew a black top, you know, Plague Stone. Yes. Black Dog would be very helpful, although it you does do probably want to use it since Steve has talking elements in his Discord pile. It only brings those right. back into play. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're good. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah it's, 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 there's a lot of similar effects to it. It's yeah. weird. It's a weird. That one in particular. But well, if you did use it, it'd be too late to commit those talking elements to the story, so we might still do it if you can win the game here. Useless copy. This is not Game of Thrones, so you can't attach it to your other unique card as a dupe. Plays Ascendant and try to go for the win here. So the question is, is he going to be aggressive and assume that he has got everything in control? Or is he going to settle for just two stories with an overwhelming number? Probably not, but you can get darn close. Yeah, David only has a single domain open. He only has one Miskatonic resource. Maybe more important, he only has two Yogg resources. To, so if you can't even play Mist of Leaf, and that has stuff has a three. That can be a very strong card for zero. Definitely. I'm sure Tom's aware of that. I'm trying to think what tricks you do right now. Say in this particular position, I probably would go all in. Uh, a lot of math here. David does have a copy of Kizzy, so. That's correct. This is why it's always important to look at both sides. From David, he knows <laughs> definitely know how what position he's in. Tom's running all the permutations, trying to figure out what is really his best choice of uh, commitment, and he knows exactly what he has and what he cannot do. I think Tom is usually a two stories this turn. Yes. I was to wait till next turn to get the last one. David has zero stories and only one success token. Two cards in hand. Two cards in hand. One domain. That's the right one. Sends them all but one character. Let him take it unopposed. Chooses not to trigger the second dragon. Sacrifices all of his characters 
committed to this story and come to dream time after you replace this story rearrange any revealed stories and you know, all success tokens on the board in place well, the the <laughs> it, uh, it was the reverse of when we played earlier a little bit <laughs> well, time goes with Brandon and Carlos congrats to Tom our final host of the card game champion yep. Congrats to David for getting second place. What's that? Not David for that. Well fought. Tom gets his title back. It's an excellent play. Excellent yes, play. he is. Yeah, that's putting this talking on to play. Definitely changed the game there. So thanks for watching, everyone. Yeah, it was. Really, uh, kind of a bittersweet moment. I think, it for is both of definitely us, right? yeah. Yeah. a great game. Yeah. I think that it, while it's not going to have a uh, supported competitive league, I hope that uh, the game itself continues to live on socially and in a casual marketplace. I know definitely. that I certainly will be playing it oh, pretty yeah. frequently. I will definitely keep it playing, Absolutely. keep the game alive. <laughs> it's been a very fun run, one of my favorite games ever. So. I think it's in a really good place. I think that, you know, it looking is. at it from a, 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 you know, a board game perspective, being able to bring things out and, you know, switch up your own builds, create new uh, and challenging decks to go against each other would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's got a very big card pool, so a lot of possibilities out there to explore. Hopefully the community will stay together and maybe run their own events. I'm sure at some point you and Tom are going to sit down and duke it out one last time. Oh, yeah. Hey, we haven't played very often, so we should here. Hi, this is Damon Stone once again as the lead designer of Call of Cthulhu with our second place uh, player. We have David Berksham. Yeah. Sir, congratulations. It was a fantastic deck and well played. Well played. Thank you very much, sir. I heard that uh, you were Tom's only loss in uh, the Swiss. Yeah, so the, the game in Swiss was basically the exact opposite. So uh, I just, congratulations to Tom on that one, and uh, hopefully I'll see him around here in the next couple of years. I'm sure you'll get a chance to uh, revenge that loss. I'm going to go ahead and present you with uh, an art print. This is Zach, our manager for organized play. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and grab Tom. Thank Tom you, sir. Thank you. Welcome, Tom Caper. It's good to see you again. Good to see you again, man. This is great. I mean, I feel like we are a long time friends now. I'm constantly seeing you here in the winner's circle. How do you feel about it? I, I can't explain the feelings right now. It's just uh, to go out on top for the last tournament for Cthulhu, a dream come true again. Um, I mean, I just can't thank FFG enough for putting on an amazing event, giving us one last go. Um, David was a tremendous competitor. The field was great. We had an awesome turnout. I, as someone who this, this game was so impactful for my life, to see it end on such a high note gets right in the heart. Gets to you, doesn't it? Right in the heart. <laughs> Excellent. So how does it feel to be our winningest champion out of any LCG? I... Uh, I mean, just no words to describe it. I've got nothing. It's it's something that shouldn't happen um, just by pure odds alone, but to keep defying it and being able to still compete at a high level um, in your favorite games. Uh, uh, I just look forward to hopefully continuing someplace else now that it was gone. Excellent. Well, I'm going to allow Zach to present you with your prizes. First, we have our uh, trophy. Thank you, Zach. And we have our exclusive play mat, a thing of beauty. I actually really love this one. It's, pr it's pretty awesome. It's a pretty amazing art. And, sir, I would like to thank you very much. Congratulations, Tom. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure and an honor, Damon. Thank you. Thank you, sir.